Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. There's a lot to cover, as I'm pretty sure that you saw in the title. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. I found maybe the best article that actually covers nearly everything that's going to be happening over the course of this week. It says, once again, this week will bring major macroeconomic data for the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets, which investors should be paying attention to. While Bitcoin has steadily managed to break correlation with the S&P 500, I mean, eh, slightly, lightly, sometimes it goes, I'm, it's still basically the same. It is likely that the Federal Reserve's monetary policy will continue to have a strong impact on the market. And even though the week is off to a quiet start, there are two macro events this week that could be significant. First off, the U.S. stock market is closed. It is President's Day for everyone inside of the United States, while quarterly earnings will continue through Tuesday until Friday. In particular, major retailers could test the strength of the U.S. stock market rally in the week ahead as investors get a glimpse into the health of consumer spending and the impact of inflation on corporate profits. On Tuesday, Walmart and Home Depot will be releasing their reports. So the first part is that basically another set of major companies are going to come forward and announce how much money they made or did not make. If they made healthy profits, it means in some way, I'm lightly air quoting here, that the Federal Reserve's job of raising interest rates to lower inflation has had a healthy impact on people being able to want to go back to stores to spend more money than they previously were before. If they made less money and less people are going to the stores, well, therefore, it means that what the Fed was trying to do didn't work and they have to figure out something else in order to make sure that people once again uh, spend their money without thinking about it. That's basically how it goes if you've never paid attention to how these companies talk. On Wednesday, however, comes the first key event, the FOMC Minutes. This is a detailed report on the FOMC's most recent reading meeting, there we go, on the 1st of February, offering in-depth insights into the economic and financial conditions that influence the interest rate vote. Financial and Bitcoin investors are likely to pay extra close attention this time around. So uh, basically, uh, we're going to hear from the Fed once again. We hear from them every two weeks or so, like the, the really important meetings from them. And they're basically going to announce, uh, or rather, we're going to get indications of if they think that they should keep things exactly the same, if they're going to be raising interest rates by 0.25% again which is supposed to happen, I think, the beginning of March, or if they're going to raise it by 0.5 points, that is to say half of a percent, so that we kind of jump completely forward to the 5% goal that they have uh, for interest rates. Or if we hear that it's not warranted at all because of what they've been doing has actually worked out. However, recently they've also been announcing that they uh, still... Uh, want to remain hawkish. That is to say, they don't want anyone to get comfortable with the idea of where interest rates are right now or where inflation is. They're still trying to lower inflation down to the 2% mark. I forgot what the most recent number was for inflation. It doesn't really entirely matter. All the markets are waiting for, all the markets are really waiting for uh, is to hear that they're either going to raise interest rates by 025 I think 0.5 would give a shock to the market, but we would then be over the 5% number, so the market would then rally a couple of days after, or if uh, they believe that there's no more need for any of these things after the one in March. Like I said, it's a lot going on all at the exact same time. A heavy portion of the price news today, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin price forecast, why this week is crucial for Bitcoin's price. Bitcoin's price and Ethereum predictions. Will the FOMC meeting minutes impact Bitcoin and Ether this week? Almost guaranteed, 1,000%. There's no world that we will live in where Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets prices aren't impacted in some sort of way by this meeting. Uh, if the Fed gives us bad news, prices will go down. 
If the Fed says that they are stopping or slowing down their interest rate hikes, the cryptocurrency market will be going up. It, there's like there's no way to get around it. The the chances of Bitcoin remaining exactly where it is and going up or down by zero percent based on this news is zero. There's no you know it is going to move in some sort of way. On top of that, the amount of price predictions for Bitcoin continue to roll in quite heavily. Every single day, the for those of you who've been missing it uh, since the very beginning of this year, I feel like I'm screaming. I don't know why I feel like I'm screaming. I don't know why. Anyway, the point is a lot of people are quite adamant that this year or the very beginning of next year, we are going to see either a 100, 150,000 or $200,000 Bitcoin. A lot of people are looking at their charts. You might remember before we were talking about the idea of Bitcoin getting to $10 million. People are very vocal about this. They think that now is the time. They're seeing something in the charts. I know that it has to do majorly with the, with the idea of the Fed stopping to raise interest rates. A lot of people are expecting a dramatic recovery for the stock market as this year continues to go on because the Fed will at some point this year... The estimate being March, uh, stop raising interest rates. And we saw before what happened when they rose it by only 0.25. Bitcoin went from 21,000 to 25,000 where it currently year is. And the idea is, as this continues over the course of the year, Bitcoin's price will go up. So people are, this one says $180,000. Explosion is incoming. Sure, why, why not? I, I don't doubt it. At all, Bitcoin on the cusp of an aggressive move. A lot of people think that either this week or next week, they say that Bitcoin looks very healthy. Bitcoin looks like it's going to continue moving. You might have been reading a lot about uh, Bitcoin's volatility that is constantly in the news. Volatility is not meant to be a bad thing in terms of Bitcoin's movement. It's more that there the are people actually trading and moving the price back and forth and volatility we've seen historically has actually been quite beneficial for Bitcoin when a large number of people are back in the market because it means that people are buying while people are trying to sell and move the price down and we tend to see uh, short squeezes. So people who are betting against the price of Bitcoin, they get squeezed out and the price squeezes higher. I don't know how to say squeeze any more times. Uh, this week, or next week, a lot of people are saying that we should be, it says on the screen, it says $29,000 to a $30,000 Bitcoin. And if we reach that number, that is significant, similar to the number that we saw the end of last year, when we were around 15, 16, 17,000 per Bitcoin, and everyone was like, we got to get to 20, we got to get to 20, we got to get to 20, we got to get to 20. And we got to 20,000, and this is where we currently are right now. 25,000 is like another... A uh, squeezing zone. Yeah, see, I managed to say squeezing once again. Uh, on top of that, it says key events this week. U.S. GDP, U.K., U.S., Eurozone, PMI, Fed minutes, and more. We're going to be hearing a lot from different countries as to the health of their markets. If their GDPs are rising, uh, there have been a number of indications that there are European economic zones within the European economic zone uh, that are not doing too fancy. As I mean, many people kind of predicted that Spain, Italy, and Greece would not be the shining beacons that a lot of people were assuming that they would be. Uh, the United Kingdom, for those of you who have not been paying attention for the last three or four years, uh, ain't doing too great. Uh, it's mainly because of Brexit. A lot of companies, a huge number of companies have left their borders. A lot of companies uh, who were even UK based or from the UK are also leaving the UK. And inflation there is also not good. And it's like it's basically like a US 2.0 kind of situation. Uh, the rental crisis, the housing crisis, you name it, the UK has it. You can Google or YouTube all of these things. You are going to be uh, unpleasantly shocked when you see exactly how bad that it actually is is there. So we're waiting for economic data from nearly every country at the moment. The ones that you typically always historically uh, get the most energy are the US and Europe to see what's going on. Also in uh, major silver lining news, uh, Chinese market makers, the people who control rates within the country, 
have left their rates unchanged, which is a uh, good thing as they could have lowered them and or risen them as an indication that their economy was either not doing too great or was maybe on the up and up, but them leaving it unchanged means that there's no, apparently, no real issues within their economy. And as such, when this happened, uh, other Asian stocks began to rise at the exact same time. And also, um, cryptocurrency prices are also currently going up despite the U.S. stock market being closed today for President's Day. It says, reopening to recovery, Goldman Sachs sees China's stock surging as much as 24% by the end of this year. If that happens, other Asian stocks will also begin to get very bullish. If that happens, the U.S. markets will see that there's a lot of money in Asia to be made. Stocks will begin to rise in unison altogether. And who benefits? Us, as always, from the rise of the stock markets. It is going to be a very heavy week. Uh, all we can finger crossed hope for is that uh, we are going to hear from the Fed and they are going to announce another rate hike of 0.25%, which would be euphoric for the market. They may announce 0.50, which I've seen floating around. It wouldn't be that bad, but I think people would overreact and act like it's something terrible that we didn't know was going to happen. The market might fall a bit. And then as always, two days later, after a Fed rate hike, prices will begin to move higher. Or the Fed may simply announce, hey, what we've been doing has been working out as they've been looking over January and the beginning of February numbers. We're going to stop raising interest rates on X date, and then the market will completely lose its mind and do a good 9X. That's all the price news that we have right now. Told you it was going to be a bit of a doozy. There's a lot to look forward to, as always. I mean, this is just the, the general uh, sentiment of world markets since... About a good year and a half ago, a lot of people are quite uh, wary and don't know where things are going to go. I think things will be fine. It appears as though they will be. It's more of a just a, a when markets will fully go back up as opposed to an if. That's all the price news. Yeah. Let's move on. In the most popular news story of the, the, T-H-E-E-E, -E -E, most popular news story of the day, one of the crypto exchange Gemini's co-founders has claimed that if the U.S. doesn't offer clear rules, it will be left in the dust. Cameron Winklevoss, an American cryptocurrency investor and co-founder of the cryptocurrency exchange Gemini, has predicted that the next crypto bull run will begin in the East. According to a Twitter thread shared on the 19th of February, it will be a humbling reminder to the West that crypto is a global asset class and that it cannot be stopped. It can be assumed that the comments from Gemini's co-founder comes in the wake of increased regulatory action by U.S. authorities. It is worth noting that last week, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and the New York Department of Financial Services took action against stablecoin issuer Paxos. They also did it against Kraken. Uh, don't forget that Gemini also was in uh, hot water a couple of weeks ago as well as the SEC also went after them. And then the SEC also went after Coinbase as well. You might remember because I was, I, was, I was quite shocked in that video because Gemini is like the most... Uh, knee bendy doesn't make any sense. They they always kiss the ring. You understand what I'm talking about for regulators all the time. And the fact that they got in trouble, I just assume that they're they're I I I I feel like they're they're rippling. That is to say, like the Ripple company, who at, who received so much backlash from U.S. regulators that they're basically doing nearly all their business overseas. And I wonder if this will be Gemini's time where they're also like, hey, let's go get licenses around the world as well. I don't know why they waited so long. Um, in his Twitter thread, Winklevoss highlighted that U.S. regulators have only two options when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Embrace it or be left behind. On top of that, he said, and I do quote, any government that doesn't offer clear rules and sincere guidance will be left in the dust quickly. This will mean missing out on the greatest period of growth since the rise of the commercial internet, and it will mean missing out on shaping and being a foundational, yeah, foundational, 
part of the future financial infrastructure of this world and beyond. I'm actually, I, I am shocked. I go over news every single day. You don't understand the level of shockedness that I have when you talk about that the U.S. has done nothing. Bitcoin has been around for 14 years. 14 years! When you talk about the, the what he's saying as far as the, the East taking over, it's basically because uh, I think nearly every Asian country has given cryptocurrency regulations at this point. Nearly every single one. Uh, they, I mean, I think there's one country that banned it, but you know, they're, you know, you can't um, have everything when you have dictators. Um, but the other part is like they've all given, you know, how much you pay for taxes. Some of them have even said you pay nothing for taxes. Some of them have declared cryptocurrencies as um, not a form of legal tender, but like a currency in and of itself, so that when you cash out of it, you also pay no taxes on it. There's actual regulation as to what you can and can't do. Who can sign up for what and who has to so-and-so? We were talking about, uh, what, uh, I want to say Thailand or Malaysia. I, I don't, I, f- forgive me for not remembering which one. But there was one of those countries, their SEC set up something on their SEC website that basically allows anyone to go to it to learn about cryptocurrencies as much as they want. They teach you, they teach you what blockchain is, what cryptocurrencies are what volatility means, what what signs to look for in markets to understand what coins may or may not be deemed a security within that country. The U.S. has done diddly squat. It's the, I, I don't understand. I mean, I do, as someone who was born in the States, I understand what it all is. The factor of me saying I don't understand comes the 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 high level of stupidity of being so greedy and so monopolistic, I feel like that's a word, that you would do anything to try and destroy this new ecosystem that you could have complete and full control over. The United States could be the leader in cryptocurrency mining. They could have set up something before where all 50 states have their own individual laws, but there's like heavy mining actually happening in every single state that's happening from renewable energy. They could have the most favorable taxation rates when it comes to cryptocurrencies. You know, gold is taxed at this. You, for those of you who don't know who aren't in or are born in the States, you pay two taxes normally at the end of the year. There's a federal tax and then a state tax. And it usually comes out to around 50% depending on where you are in the country. It can be absolutely terrible. But imagine if that was even lower for cryptocurrencies or cryptocurrency companies. For the first three years, you pay a 10% tax. And every year after that is only a 15, 20% tax how much that would incentivize people from even being in Europe or being in Asia. I, I, I just don't really get it. I, I know that all of it has to do with, in some way, trying to protect the integrity and the strength of the U.S. dollar. But this isn't how you do it. You don't kick money out of your borders. You don't make sure that you have a brain drain. You don't uh, find ways that you could have gained extra trillions of dollars to flow through your ecosystem within your country. And then you make sure that you go after all the companies who would have created those trillions of dollars and those extra jobs. It's really, it's a weird mindset. Um, Like I said, this is the most popular news story of the day. I don't know if it's because they're making it seem like the Winklevoss twins now have cojones or like, you know, they're stepping up to the plate and it's like, Other companies realized this well before. When Binance was first told to uh, create Binance US, uh, I think three different companies left the United States, like big cryptocurrency exchanges, and they went to, to, I think one went to England, the other one set up shop in, in Europe, and they're doing just fine, you know. So they're not the, the first people to be like, we don't, we don't think the SEC is right, or this isn't, but you know. I'm sure it comes as a major shock to them, and it comes as a major shock to me. When this was 2013, 14, 15, when they were first a- activating or talking about the bit license, which is the dumbest thing in the entire world. Like, what world are you living on to even think of proposing something like that? And they had this like uh, live stream thing showing them sitting in front of all these regulators. I'm certain that the Winklevoss twins really assumed that, you know, they were going to be at the forefront of this entire thing and that, you know, they would have proper cryptocurrency regulations and they would be the first ones to get the 
the paperwork and, you know, but I guess reality sets in when you realize how, how greedy greed can be. I told you all this before. Regulators are, and I told you this years ago, regulators are coming down hard on all the actual cryptocurrency exchanges because they don't want them. Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, they want their own cryptocurrency exchanges. The problem is the New York Stock Exchange created their own cryptocurrency platform and nobody used it. It's a kick in the face to the old system. The old system is supposed to be taking care of this new system. They're supposed to ha- bring it under their wing, completely crunch it and destroy it and mold it how they want to do it. And then, uh, yeah, sure, enter. Go into the cryptocurrency market. We now have complete full control over it. It drives them insane that they don't control the market. They may be able to influence it. They may be able to sell off a huge portion of coins, but it's one country against 190-something other countries out there on the planet who also have access to this system. So they're trying to do everything that they can, and, and I, it's, it's weird. They're trying to do everything that they can to de-incentivize people from getting into the cryptocurrency market, from making people think that crypto is evil or wrong or you shouldn't be touching it or it's only for this or something only for that. But the other people who are buying, it's, 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 it's all very, very weird. And it all comes down to greed. Like I've said before, uh, I would be shaken to the core if we, if we found out that there wasn't any money being passed along the table at some point to some regulator or somewhere within the United States. It's, it's far too obvious at this point. But uh, on a lighter note, the rest of the world exists. Cryptocurrencies continue to thrive other places. So I'm not sure what the SEC thinks they're doing, but keep it up. It says crypto's next bull run will come from the East Gemini co-founder. Next crypto bull run will be driven by Asia. Most popular news story. I, I don't know why. I can't predict which stories will be the most popular. Why or why not? But alas, this is where we are. I assume this comes off the back of the news that we've been getting for the last two weeks. I was skeptical mostly about this news before, mainly because... Uh, of reasons if you watch the news. Um, However, Hong Kong uh, has announced that they are going to begin rolling out cryptocurrency regulations quite quick. I think the rumors that were spreading around or maybe even the real news because there's so much happening is that by June, they should have everything, you know, you should know explicitly within Hong Kong exactly what X, Y, and Z is, what you can and can't do. How taxation will work. <clears throat> Sorry, geez, Louise. And all those kinds <clears throat> of things. Hold on. And thank you to everyone who actually held on. <clears throat> I don't know what that was. <clears throat> Sometimes I sit here and laugh when I like choke or something because I'm like... <clears throat> What if I'm talking like so much crap about someone? Anyway, the point is, <laughs> uh, yes, the major news story of the day is that the Winklevoss twins believe that the cryptocurrency next bull run will be ignited more so by Asia. I assume it's because um, if you have looked into it, Hong Kong also has very favorable taxation rules for crypto. Um, we also have regulatory confirmation from Japan and South Korea, which are the countries who uh, ruled the cryptocurrency space back in 2017 and 2018. So once we get proper news from Hong Kong, uh, Asia will probably once again take over the cryptocurrency space. Yeah, that's the most popular news story of the day. Weird, right? One of the Winklevoss twins. And yeah, let's move on. The rest of the news is really weird, as always. It says Shiba Inu lead developer hints that Shibarium, Shibarium uh, may go live sometime this week. You may remember 
about two or three videos ago, there was news that there was no actual date for this thing to go live. A lot of people within the Shiba Inu community got a little bit upset uh, because there were rumors floating around that it was supposed to happen on the 1st of February, then rumors it was going to happen on Valentine's Day, and then there was some other rumor as to when it was going to happen. So now, apparently, it has been hinted, allegedly, that sometime this week, the beta version of their Layer 2 solution that is allegedly going to burn trillions of Shiba Inu tokens may go live this week. It's meant to be the beta version, as far as I have been looking around on the interwebs. Uh, so I'm not sure if this will be user or consumer ready, or if this is simply going to be a light version or a testnet version. There's no real information. I assure you, whenever this thing does get launched, we are most certainly going to hear about it everywhere because Shiba Inu is by far probably the most popular coin floating around right now, and it's always in the news everywhere all the time. So yeah, the Shiba Inu Layer 2 solution, Shibarium, Shibarurum, uh, may apparently go live in beta over the course of this week. Golf clap, golf clap, golf clap. Also in the news, Paxos is uh, quite vocal. Paxos, a leading regulated blockchain and tokenization infrastructure platform, has responded to the US SEC over its issuance of Binance's US dollar stablecoin. For those of you who missed that last week, the US SEC came forward and I think they gave Binance a warning about something. And then subsequently, a couple of hours later, they gave Paxos a, a warning, a problem, a something. Uh, because Paxos is apparently one of the mentors of the Binance US dollar. And the US SEC announced that they believe that the Binance US dollar is a security. Once again, for those of you who were not there during my rant, uh, the idea of a security in the United States is something that is acquired with the expectation of profit, i.e. you buy Microsoft stock because you assume that the continuation of efforts from Microsoft will have a positive effect on their stock price and therefore you are buying it with an expectation of profit from the merits or actions of the actual company. Um, however, no one is buying any stablecoin uh, with an expectation of profit directly from that stablecoin. You may be actively trading that coin against Bitcoin or Ether or Cardano or Polkadot because you're trying to make a profit, but you're not holding the coin itself expecting the stablecoin to go to a dollar and five cents. And you're like, woo, howdy, I made a huge profit. That's not how... It works. So this is another level of corruption that we're seeing from the US SEC and them trying to get no one's buying a stable coin to profit from it. It is impossible to make that any clearer. Also, I would like to point out uh, how weird that it is. And that this is just me because we also got news that allegedly the reason why Paxos got in trouble is because Circle the people from Coinbase who make the USC dollar, uh, they apparently tipped off the US SEC that Paxos was doing something wrong. So weird how the Coinbase dollar isn't having a problem. And I think the only reason why we're not hearing about Tether is because Tether over the last three years uh, has done a very good job making sure that their coin is about on 15 different blockchains. And I assume they're are many different issuers all around the world. In a 13th of January blog, Paxos refuted claims by the SEC that Binance US dollar is a security under federal securities laws. The response by Paxos comes after the SEC sent a Wells notice to the firm earlier this month stating that it was considering recommending an action alleging that the Binance US dollar is a security and that Paxos should have registered the offering of the Binance US dollar under the federal securities law. This makes no sense. These coins are not securities. I don't even care or like stable coins, but this is abundantly obvious. Why would you even, I mean, you want to talk about actual decentralization or actual expectation of profits. There are a 
There's there's a good other 100 coins on, on the actual coin market cap that have no decentralization and are definitely securities. Why go after Paxos? Doesn't this seem incredibly weird to anyone else that the SEC is constantly doing this and that they're always able to get away with it? Who regulates the regulators? Why are they why why are they simply uh, swinging their uh, tail around uh, completely unchecked? So on top of that news, Paxos has basically announced, uh, "Come at me, bro," saying that they are more than willing uh, to litigate if necessary, uh, because I'm pretty sure they also know that they could definitely win. I think the US SEC is used to people being terrified of them and simply paying off fees uh, whenever they're told to do so because they probably think that these people don't actually know the laws and or uh, should be completely, you know, the SEC has, says I have to do it. Terrible, terrible people. Once again, this is not me uh, rooting for stable coins. It's more of a how many other things in the space are actual scams and you're going after Paxos for minting Binance US dollars? How about actually regulating? How about actually helping US consumers? How about actually instead of fining uh, Kraken and other crypto exchanges 10, 20, 30 million dollars, why not use that money to actually help people who have been wronged in the cryptocurrency space? Yeah, see logic, right? So that's the Paxos news, also quite um, popular, um, and also always in the news because, you know, just why not? <clears throat> Kathy Wood uh, from ARK Invest apparently purchased another 133,321 shares of Coinbase uh, over the course of last week. For those of you who keep missing it, uh, this woman on the screen is absolutely obsessed with Coinbase, and every time she purchases stock from them, uh, it's a ginormous number, and therefore it ends up making cryptocurrency news. Uh, she believes that Coinbase stock is so ridiculously undervalued, and she thinks it's going to be one of the top things in the entirety of the stock market. I don't know if it's ever going to be like Class A uh, Berkshire Hathaway stock, but alas, here we are. So yeah, this was also uh, very much in the news because Kathy Woods is always a buy-in. Uh, I can't ever myself conceptualize, maybe it's because I'm not a billionaire, maybe, maybe that's the reason. Maybe I can't conceptualize why I would ever want to buy I think she's bought over like 300,000 shares in the last couple of weeks of Coinbase as opposed to putting that money into crypto where, where that I know is going to actually do a 10x. But once again, maybe my investor mindset is quite different because I'm not rolling in the, uh, in the proverbial dough. That's the Kathy Woods bought another 133,000 shares of Coinbase. You know, live your life. It, it's her money. Get it, girl. Do do whatever you need to do to feel fancy. All right. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Martin Steuer, Buddy McBoatface, Sam Ratter, Dotha Diddy, Manny, Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, and let's move on. Empire Queen, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave the Dealers, Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay, Mo Barazi, VB Nerd, 21, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pater Noster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moon Man High, XRP, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Bibliophobia, Adam Grayson, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D Set, Suna, Paxis, Jim, Garner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho Nisa, and on Crypto with Lionel. Thank you all very much very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who left a like, who has commented, who has commented twice. I see every, yeah, I see you guys, don't worry. In the, every day, I, I see the same people who are commenting uh, the moment that the video ends up going up. I do thank you for your algorithmic help. Thank you to everyone who is still here listening to me rant about this weird, weird, weird market at the moment. 
Bitcoin is up by 0.86%. Ethereum is up by 0.91%. At least they're trying to go up. I assume this is all for the uh, the news in Asia that we were just talking about momentarily ago. Ethereum has finally broken past $1,700. We have still not heard when the actual upgrade for uh, Shanghai is going to happen. Historically, uh, we would have heard or been given an exact date by this point, when the upgrade is going to take place, it's almost the end of February, and we still know nothing as to when in March we are going to be getting uh, this update from the Ethereum people. Uh, Binance Coin is up by 1%, ADA is up by 1%, OKB is up by 2 Shiba Inu is up by 3 Tron is up by 2 Avalanche is up by 4 Uniswap is up by 3 Anything else crazy? VeChain Thor is up by 6.9 percentile points. Near Protocol is up by 5.5. Flow is up by 3.4. Mana is up by 5. Sandbox is up by 10. I, 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 I don't know. Something happened. I mean... To be fair, sand. First of all, Sandbox is also, in case you missed it last week, uh, Sandbox has also partnered with the Saudi Arabian government, who's also going to be building stuff there. There's just always something happening with Sandbox. Like I, I don't understand how the coin isn't like four dollars at this point. Like I, I sincerely don't understand. But alas, here we are. Uh, Theta's up by five, and Tezos is up by four percent as well. I do hope. That you've all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.